word for you today. I mean, he came for a word today. Yeah. I was about to say, wait a minute, make a company look, look at us like, what are y'all coming up? <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, so if you will make your way to Matthew, the book of Matthew, first chapter 27, please. Chapter 27. If you are in need of a Bible to use, make sure you hand an earphone, put one in your hand. If you do not own a Bible, that just became your gift from this ministry. That is something you've always done since day one when you opened the doors back in 2010. And that is to provide the Word of God free of charge. The Bible tells us that freely you were given the gospel. That's what you were given. Freely you should give it. So you've given the good news freely. You give it out freely. So please understand that you have that Bible and you need to take it with you. That is your gift. That's something that our tithes, offerings, and donations go toward. All right. The rest of y'all who are on the um, your apps and you've been waiting for me. <laughs> Amen. Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 through 66. We'll start us off. And it reads, the next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. Mm. After three days, somebody say three days? Three days. I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And that last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Mm -hmm. Father God, we bless you on this day, Lord. And we thank you for what you've already done. For what you've already done in the spirit, God. Lord, season this word, God, and anoint it to do what you have called for it to do, Lord. Even as you revealed it, Lord, to the authors of this book, Lord, we thank you for it. May it be a double-edged sword, Lord, even as it proves the congregation, God, it proves me as I stand here and deliver the word, Lord. Let me die to self that I may live in you and let me push myself aside so that your word can go forward. We thank you that it never returns void, God, and that it's always relevant for what we're going through today. Lord, we thank you that you have honored us with this word, with your spirit and with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 After three days, I will rise again. After three days, I will rise again. Y'all, when they were in communion together, if you'll remember back a chapter before that, he told them, but after I'm raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Somebody say Galilee. Galilee. All right. I will go ahead of you. Once I'm raised up, where are you supposed to meet me? Galilee. All right. Now, Matt, the book's Matthew, Mark, and John have Jesus saying, the disciples are to rendezvous with him in Galilee. Mm -hmm. That would be in northern Israel, about three days' journey away. How many of y'all were here when I talked about Lazarus? And you all remember, in Jewish culture, they believe that the spirit of the dead still lingered around for how many days? Three days. For three days. Mm. Just hitting home with somebody already. For three days, they believed that the spirit was still there. So, two things here to note. Jesus wanted them to meet him at a location that would force them to travel for those three days to ensure that he was dead. Because according to their culture, a person isn't dead dead. You know how they're dead. See, but for Jews, for three days, you're only dead. After the third day, you're dead dead. <laughs> so he, he had to make sure that they knew he was dead dead when they saw him again so that they would believe. Because they really believe that if they saw him on day one, day two, or even at the beginning of day three, that that was just an apparition. Which is valid. That's his ghost around in the tomb. If he was, they met him right outside the tomb. So he said, we're going to go away from the tomb. One, so you can't say, they can't say, blow it off and say, oh, it was just a ghost. It was just his ghost. I need to be dead dead. And then for you to see me again. So I'm not going to tell you to wait. I'm going to tell you to go for three days. You got, it's going to take three days for you to get there. So that when you see me again, you already know this is not a ghost. This is me. This is me. Anybody else? 
anybody ever had to wait to make sure it was God? We love the immediate confirmation, but what happens when you gotta wait to make sure that it's God? If this thing lasts this long, if this feeling lasts this long, if this unction lasts this long, I know it's God. Amen, God. Amen, God. But we're going to keep on moving on because that's definitely not the only reason he sent them to Galilee. Can we go over to Matthew 28? Let's flip the page. He came for this. Chapter 28 of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards sh guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Say Galilee. Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Oh, they're better than me. I, I don't know that I would have been so calm. <laughs> Not because he's Jesus, but because he's a zombie. Yeah. Then Jesus said to them, if you haven't been to my church before, I like to laugh, okay? I do, I like to laugh. Y'all like, did he just call Jesus a zombie? I sure did. What else would you call? Hallelujah. Verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go where? Galilee. There they will see me. Verse 11, while they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, you must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while they were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So ends the reading of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Oh, Lord. God sent me here to tell you, all it's time to meet him in Galilee. Amen. It's time to meet him in Galilee. You know what? I'm not mad at the people. I haven't even explained it. Y'all already shout. Amen, hey, man, Galilee. Amen. Just give me directions. I know that there obviously there's a promise in Galilee. You ain't got to tell me where I'm going. Just tell me. If you say send me to Galilee, get me to Galilee. Call an Uber or whatever. Get me to Galilee. Y'all, I love you. Woo! Get me to Galilee. Look at verse 6 of that. I didn't give this to you, because we're going to look at our Bibles for this one. Look at verse 6. He said, he is not here, for he's been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. Skip ahead to verse 10. Then Jesus, we just read these, but the word of God bears rereading. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. That's where they'll see. There they will see me, verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus, to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Why Galilee? Oh, God, why Galilee? Why did they have to go to Galilee? Well, you know, I had to do some research on good old Galilee. This ain't the first time. Y'all didn't, didn't just meet me. Right. I said that we are, uh, and these the visitors, they know me too. They've been on live stream, don't front. Amen, family. So I had to look into Galilee. See, Galilee was the scene of some of the most memorable times in Jewish history. You may not realize it. 
But Galilee was the home of our Lord for almost 30 years of his life. He was born, he was a Nazarene, but he lived most of his life in Galilee. Which means that of 32 of his parables, no less than 19 were spoken in Galilee. Out of 32 parables, he spoke 19 in Galilee. Of the 33 great miracles that he did, 25 were performed in Galilee. His first miracle was at the wedding in Cana in Galilee. His last one after his resurrection was on the shore of Galilee Sea. Oh, Galilee. In Galilee, he delivered the Sermon on the Mount. It was in Galilee that he called his first disciples. It was in Galilee where he had the transfiguration. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you to prove my identity. I'm taking you back to the place of miracles. You didn't know you were coming to a prophetic word today, did you? Some of you did. Some of you said, I'm here for it. That's what I came for. I can read the Bible, see, but I need to hear what thus saith the Lord right now. In this season, in my life, right now, and I trust you. You're in a place right now where you need to know I'm alive. Anybody in here need to know that Jesus is alive right now, that God is alive, the Holy Spirit is alive in your life right now because I'm making some decisions in my life right now and I need to know that God is directing them. Right. I'm allowing some people back into my life that I might not have trusted before, but I'm, so I need to know that God is in yeah. I'm closing some doors in my life that's going to hurt, so I really need to know that God is in this right now. We got to back together, Lee. I'm believing God for some impossible things right now. Yes. People are telling me that this can't happen, never has happened, not gonna happen. Mm. We're not gonna make it. That's not gonna play out that way. I need to go back to the place of miracles. See, in Galilee, he performed 25 of the 33 miracles that he did. I need to take you back to a place where you believe in it. Gracias. 
stop you from believing in God. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't care that people thought that you were a holy roller, church folks. I didn't take you back yeah. to that place in your mindset yeah. when you believe me for anything. Yeah. So I got to go back to Galilee. Yeah. You can't hear me. Ah. You can't hear me where you are. See, because right there at the tomb, it was still too negative. Can I get with some people right here? Who I can't hear God amongst all this negativity. Yes. People are limited and talking about, well, you know, we can't do this. And can't. I don't know. Can't end in my God's vocabulary. I need to get back to it. Run. 
the miracle worker, the savior, the king, he got captured. That messed with them. All this time we believed. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. Jesus, get down. So imagine watching him take his last breath up on that cross. Don't know what to do. Remember they retreated back to those rooms. Grieved, distraught. I can imagine everybody, what you remember, y'all, come on, come on, keep it together. You know what he said? Well, I know what he said when you saw him bleed out. You saw him take his little body off the cross. Come on now. What are we supposed to do now? He's going to come after us. We were rebels with him. We walked boldly with him. We upset the system with him. Now he's gone. They're coming for us, y'all. They hid and they were scared. They hid, y'all. They were scared. And so when Jesus said, Master, told me, he said, I understand. I'm, I'm taking a little liberty with the words. But I understand you're scared. And you can't be fruitful in this environment. These people are trying to kill you because of me. And even though I told you that persecution will come for my name's sake, you weren't ready for it because you really didn't believe I was going to go. I got to get you out of there. I got to get you out of there. God has said, I got to get you out of there. Come on, somebody need to receive that. I'm going to get you out of there. You've been fighting long enough to try to stay faithful to me. So the whole situation and whole circumstances. You fought a good fight, but I got to get you back to the place of miracles. I got to get you back to the place of fruitfulness. I got to get you back to the place of faith.
Hidup Ustaz Setuju Hidup Baik 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 Let's go back to Galilee Because I don't recognize you In this You ain't gonna recognize me See because over here I, I'm gonna come out the tour And I might still have everything And, and, and see but in Galilee You remember When I was strong In Galilee In Galilee I gotta take you back to Galilee when you first and where you first got in love with me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, you ever had trouble in your relationship and your therapist, you. your counselor yes. said, try to go back to when y'all first that time. Cause remember when y'all first got in love. With me. Your wife. Yes. I need you to go back to that time. I don't care if it's ten years, fifteen years, or five months.
I want to see God. I need to see Jesus. I need to see the Holy Spirit in my life. Yes. And see, and it's hard to see the Holy Spirit in these circumstances that I've been in. Yes. They don't beat my Savior down. They don't beat my faith down. They don't beat my belief in myself down. Oh, Lord. They don't told me lies about who I am. I believe them. God forgive me. Because I stopped believing. I didn't even know. So many things I didn't know, God. Oh, God, they got me over here. They done beat down my, my, my Lord, my belief, my faith, my commitment. My word. I said I was going to. God, I know I said I was going to work for you. I was going to live for you. I was going to integrate you into my life, God. But when I saw God, you up on that cross. When I saw that you didn't strike back. Oh, God, I didn't know what to do. When I saw that it seemed like you were leaving us, God, I didn't know what to do. Take me back to Galilee. Amen. Yes. When I first said yes. Take me back to Galilee. When I first fell in love with you. Take me back to Galilee when I had no excuses, God. I need to go back to Galilee. I need to believe in miracles again because I got something on my plate right now that I'm believing for. And I need, I need a leap of faith. And I remember when I used to live like that in Exodus. There was no leap of faith. Everything was possible. Everything was a miracle. But somehow I lost my faith. And now I'm a little scared. Yes. And I'm crouched down in the upper room waiting to see you. And you said, you know what? I'm coming there. See, but first you got to meet me in Galilee. How many of y'all ready to go back to Galilee? Oh, you got We're ready to go back to Galilee. We're ready to go back to Galilee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, I told you to be ready for this word. This is the word when you walk out the door, your life is not the same anymore. You walk out these doors into Galilee. You walk out these doors into Galilee. When you walk out these doors, you sold out again. You hear what I'm saying? You can't take that lightly. This is what you've been asking for. This is what you've been waiting for. You've been waiting for him to get up and meet you in Galilee. But he's saying, I'm going to get up. But what you're going to have to do is make
that your yes did not expire. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Your yes did not expire. Amen. I.e., if there's a coupon that has not expired, guess what? That means you can go into the establishment and redeem it. Your yes is being redeemed. Can I get a
God on this Resurrection Sunday, there's some people being awakened. There's some people being brought up out of situations. Even as Jesus brought up out of the tomb, God. There are people being brought up. You're witnessing people being brought up out of situations. I'm speaking right now to people being brought up out of depression. There are some people being brought up out of suicide right now. If anybody touches you, they 